Bonjour, mes amis, and welcome to Gourmet Cooking. <clears throat> We're going to do a little Cajun food again tonight. It's always a pleasure to go back to that southwest part of Louisiana and do that nice spicy Cajun food. And that's going to be crawfish balls, or bouillette de crives. It's nice crawfish meat all ground up, added to seasonings, onions and parsley and garlic and some other ingredients to make little balls. You fry those and serve those along with some rice and a nice tomato sauce. And along with that, we're going to have some turnip greens and bottoms flavored with tasso. Tasso is a, a Cajun sauce, uh, pork that's been cured, and we'll talk more about that. And then we're going to have, of course, with that, some good molasses cornbread to sop up the pot liquor that crea is created by the turnips. So that is a real Cajun meal tonight. So those of you that are interested, the recipes are on page 56 and 57 of Gourmet Cooking. So let's proceed with our recipes. And I think the first thing we need to do is get that cornbread into the oven. That takes about 20 minutes. And although I have one prepared, we might be able to do this one and have it ready when we go. We have about, <coughs> excuse me, three-fourths cup of cornmeal, one cup of flour, we have three teaspoons of baking powder. We have a teaspoon of salt. And that makes up the dry ingredients. And the liquid ingredients will be two eggs, which we're going to break into this bowl. And add those to about 3 quarters cup of milk. And blend those together. and blend all that together. We have one other ingredient that goes with that, and that's going to be about a quarter cup of some nice dark molasses. So getting all of the molasses we can out of the little container, let's blend this ingredients. In the meantime, though, we have a skillet that's fairly hot. We need to put into that skillet, a black iron skillet, about two teaspoons of oil and let that get fairly hot. And we'll mix our ingredients until they're all blended. It goes together rather quickly. Now that skillet was warm. And we just need to heat the oil a little bit. Some of that oil is going to go into this mixture. So we blend together the molasses with the milk and egg along with the dry ingredients, the flour, cornmeal, and the baking powder. A little salt for a little flavor, and we have a nice batter. Let's take our skillet, and I think this time I'm going to use a pot holder. We'll pour the excess oil into the batter, and then pour the batter into the skillet. Scraping all we can, we're going to place that into a preheated 400 degree oven for 20 minutes. And that should rise and be a very nice flavorful bread with that molasses, which is quite typical of the Creole excuse me, of the Cajun style, to have a spicy dish, as our crawfish will be, and a sweet bread to accompany it. There's a counterpoint there that is very typical of the Cajun style of cooking. So let's get our vegetable underway, and that's going to be turnips and the turnip tops, or the greens, as it's called. Uh, we have most of these prepared. This was one large bunch. I saved a couple. Just to show you, this has all been picked over. This was washed very well. It always has lots of sand and some dirt in it. So we've washed this very well. We simply want to take the tender leaves off of the stem. Let's stop a minute, though, and go to our big pot. Now, we have turned that on. And we're going to put into that two tablespoons of peanut oil 
and let that come up to heat. <clears throat> Excuse me. In the meantime, we continue to clean our turnip tops. And you can see it's very easy. It's very tender. As I say, these are very clean. Ordinarily, I do this in the sink and let these greens soak a little bit. But we did that with all of them except these two little pieces, which I saved just to illustrate the technique. Now, when we wash these, we drain them lightly, but we leave some of the water <coughs> clinging to the, to the greens. And that's the only liquid we're going to use in this dish. So taking now our greens with the liquid, the water that is clinging to them, we put that into the hot grease, stir around as we go. A little piece fell into some other oil that I have for another dish. So we get all of our greens into the pot. Now, it's amazing how big a pot you need to start. But when it's finished, it's, it uh, shrinks up considerably. So let's go back to our greens and stir those around a little bit. Put our lid on and let those cook in the liquid a little bit of liquid there for about five minutes and then we'll add the other ingredients and that's going to be some turnip bottoms the bottoms that came off of those greens and we need to peel those cutting the top and the bottom the root end and the stem end off we then want to peel the turnips and cut those into bite-sized pieces let me move this skillet up front so that it'll be getting warm and this one over here it's making a little noise because we got a little water in that we'll turn that up so that it'll be ready when we need it and we won't have to wait as we sometimes do all right let's peel our turnip and add to the ones I already have turnips are a very popular French vegetable in France primarily the root but in Cajun country and in a lot of the south Mississippi Alabama Florida Georgia um, probably some other places I'm not sure of they like the greens as well or only the greens in some cases so we have now the bottoms that came off of those turnips and we have some tasso tasso is a smoked pork that is very Cajun. In fact, this brand is produced by the magic Cajun himself, Paul Prudhomme. It's been smoked and it's heavily seasoned with cayenne pepper. So we have now this seasoning which will go into our turnips. So now the turnips need to cook about five minutes and they'll render some of their water and they'll shrink down. Our next endeavor is, first of all, let's put the tasso. That's one of the fantastic flavors that will go into this dish. And we put the turnip bottoms on top. And we're going to let that cook for about 20 minutes until the turnips are tender and ready to eat. Very simple. Let's pick up a little bit of this tasso and the seasoning, add that to our dish. Now, let's go on to our crawfish, and that's going to require some butter in this skillet, as you see here, and the first step is to saute an onion. And today we decided we were going to use the processor for all our chopping chores. So we simply take an onion and cut it into large hunks. And turning the processor on and off in short strokes so that the food will drop back down to the blade, we do that. And also, we want to control how fine we want this. If you let it run without 
starting and stopping, it could very well chop too much and you would have a puree. So the first step is to saute some onions. We'll simply put those right into our skillet. And while those are sauteing, we will prepare some of our other items. We have some garlic that needs to go in there and some green pepper, green, uh, excuse me, not green pepper, but green uh, onions. So we're going to let the processor chop both of those together. We'll put the onions in. <coughs> Start the processor. And while running, we'll drop out <coughs> cloves of garlic. So we've chopped our green onions and we'll come back to those in a moment. So in the meantime, we're simply going to put these in this dish and without cleaning, because all these things are going into the same dish, so it's not necessary to stop and clean the bowl each time, as long as the items are compatible and they're going into the same dish. We need to take our crawfish tail meat and chop it, doing that in the same manner. We now have our tail meat chopped. As you can see, these chores go rather quickly with the processor. However, I usually like to show the techniques and usually chop this mostly manually on camera. But tonight we thought it would be fun to use the processor. And the other ingredient we're going to need in this is some parsley. And we again, the same principle, sort of repetitious, but you can see the various kinds of items that you can process with a good processor. All right, so we have the parsley. Now this being the last item to chop, we can leave it right in there. And going to our onions, we can now add our green onions with the garlic in it and blend those. Turning the fire up a little more, we want to add the crawfish tail meat. Now, crawfish are not available everywhere, I realize that. And for those of you where it's not available, again, shrimp is a good substitute. It's a different flavor, but it makes wonderful dish just the same. So try the shrimp instead of the crawfish if you have, do not have the crawfish available to you. But the crawfish flavor is certainly unique and one to be desired if you can possibly obtain it. We can also add now the parsley. Now that we have all these ingredients blended together, we're going to add just a little bit of salt. Whoops, that's plenty there, and a little bit of pepper. We need two eggs and some breadcrumbs. We have a cup of breadcrumbs, which we want to add. Now what we're doing now, we've got all of our flavors, that is the crawfish and the aromatic vegetables, a little seasoning. We're adding the breadcrumbs now. And let those blend in with the rest of the ingredients. And when we add two eggs, you're going to find that that will act as a binder and hold this together so that we can then form little crawfish balls. Two other seasonings we're going to need is some Tabasco 
and a little bit of Worcestershire sauce, which we will add right into the egg. One, two, three, four, five, six, whatever your preference. And I used my fork, so we'll use this spatula simply to whisk those eggs. They don't have to be totally beaten up. Now, we add that, and you will find that will combine with the breadcrumb to make our ingredients hold together. Now, we've made the mixture. We need now to form individual little balls about the size of golf balls. Ordinarily, you need to let that cool in order to shape them. Let me see if I can't get a little bit out where I can handle it. It's a little hot, but I can handle it. And we form a nice ball of the mixture that we just made. As you can see, I've done a lot of them ahead of time simply because it takes time for this to cool down. I think we need to put this over here out of the way so that we can bring this oil up front, which has been heating. We need now to take the crawfish balls and roll those in a little flour, a light coating of flour, and we will fry these just long enough for them to become nice and brown. Cleaning up a little bit here. Let's roll them in the flour. And we'll test our oil. Just about ready. We can start the frying as soon as we complete. Now this one is the one I made just now. It's still soft from being hot. The others had a chance to cool and will hold their shape real well. But we've got that one floured, so we'll put it in. Rolling these in a little flour. We let these fry for just a matter of minutes because all the ingredients are cooked. All you need to do is to brown these. And we'll have them all in in a moment. They're so good. It's such a wonderful flavor. Crawfish balls. It's a similar filling or uh, stuffing that is made for crawfish bisque, except that that is stuffed into the cleaned heads of the crawfish. That is another dish entirely, and it's certainly a very unique dish. Putting that aside, cleaning my hands a little bit. And cleaning our board. Now, traditionally, these crawfish balls are served with rice and a little tomato sauce. Now, because of the time we couldn't do all of that on camera. We did the rice earlier, and of course, you've seen rice done many times on this show. So we're now going to serve a little bit of this rice. As you can see, it was cooked and then steamed a little bit, and you can see the grains are nice and free and independent. But we'll have a nice bowl of rice. Now, I'm serving these the crawfish balls separate on the side rather than cooked in the sauce. Some people take the crawfish balls and add them to the sauce and cook them. That's great. It's a good way to do it. However, that's not the way we elected tonight. We elected tonight to simply serve them on the side. And when we serve, you'll see how we'll handle that little chore. So we have a nice tomato sauce that we made 
That was very simple. We simply sauteed some wonderful onions until they were very limp, added some parsley, some garlic, a little oregano, and some tomato sauce, canned tomato sauce. Let that cook for about an hour, and it develops a wonderful flavor. Of course, a little salt and pepper. So, of course, we have our rice and our tomato. Let's look at these crawfish. My, we turned the heat off, but they're almost ready. They'll be ready in a moment. Let's go to our tesso and our turnips. They take 20 minutes. There's not 20 minutes of time on the show. They're cooking nicely now, and we'll complete those after the show. But we have already prepared another batch, so they would be ready on camera. So let's now go to those and serve those. We have now, oh, the fragrance is just terrific. These beautiful greens. You can see the nice turnip greens, the little pieces of tasso that are distributed throughout, and the wonderful turnip bottoms. This is a dish to really stand up and cheer about. And of course, with that wonderful cornbread, it's going to really be an, an outstanding dish. Now, besides the vegetables and the tasso, you end up with what is called a pot liquor, the wonderful juices. Remember, we only had a little water clinging to those greens, so the juices came from the vegetables themselves, a little bit of water, and uh, that is what is, we call pot liquor and is delicious especially with that cornbread. All right, we have served then our, those two. We have, that is the turnips. Let's now go to a dish here and retrieve the crawfish balls. You can see they are nice and brown. I'm gonna put those onto a paper towel for the moment let them drain. They too have a wonderful fragrance. And oh, the spiciness and the flavor is just, well, it's another dimension. It's something you should try. And believe me, this is delicious with boiled shrimp. If you don't have the crawfish, the boiled shrimp is an excellent substitute. So, taking those now, and we'll transfer those without spilling them to a serving dish without the paper towel. And as you can see, we have these nice crawfish balls. The only other ingredient now we need for our meal is a wonderful cornbread. Now the one in the oven still has a little longer to go. So we're going to retrieve the nice cornbread that we did earlier to make sure. And you can see how nice it has puffed up. And all we need now to do is to serve that. And then we'll finish the one that we started on camera and have that as seconds because this cornbread always disappears. Let's cut that in half. Half again, and then again, and we will have some beautiful slices of molasses, cornbread, to go with that potlicka and the crawfish balls, the tomato, and the rice. So we've prepared our Cajun meal. One that's very tasty, very colorful, lots of fun, one that you can talk about for a long time. And in fact, you will be talked about in a nice way for a long time if you prepare this meal for others. Now we're gonna bring this into the dining room, and in the meantime, let's review the recipes and I'll see you there.
Well, that's about as Cajun as you can get. That is real fine food. We have the crawfish balls, wonderful flavor of crawfish tail meat with seasonings, made into balls and fried, can't be beat. Wait till you taste them. And then, of course, the turnip greens on the bottoms, seasoned with tasso, producing a wonderful pot liquor, a really fantastic dish. And, of course, to go with the pot liquor, we have cornbread, molasses cornbread, a sort of a sweet cornbread. And then with the crawfish, we have the rice and the tomato sauce. Earlier, I said that some people cook this by putting the crawfish in the tomato sauce and then cooking it that way. We prefer to have our tomato sauce on top of the rice and then to put one or two on the top of that and then mix that as we go on our own plate. Some nice greens along with the tasso and the bottoms and we're going to get us a nice piece of cornbread to go with that. And of course, just to make sure that our Cajun flavor stays there, we have a little Tabasco to add if we feel we need it. A little white wine, or red if you prefer, will round out this meal of the crawfish balls, cornbread, turnips with tasso, Cajun to the core. Hope you will enjoy this, hope you will join us, and hope you will try it. A biento. La douceur du temps nous fait des avances. Partez, mes enfants, vous avez 20 ans. Partez en vacances, vous verrez agir.